no, no, no. Run, run away. You have to get out of here. You have to run. Nobody must see women's extreme wrestling. Oh God, oh God, oh no, oh no. Hey man, what's up? Yeah? Mm-hmm. No, I got it earlier, yeah. Well, thanks for sending it though. Yeah? Okay, cool. All right, later, later on? Lunch, lunch, you need lunch? All right, cool, man. All right, cool. See you in a few hours. All right, bye. No, oh, God! No! Oh, please don't. No! In the aftermath of ECW's demise, South Philadelphia mourned. There now lay a gaping void in their collective heart, a love and passion for hardcore wrestling that was now unsatisfied. While WWE would pick up the remains of ECW and use the brand for their own personal gain, life had to go on for the rest of these fanatics who wanted the brutal, hard-hitting action that had gained such a loyal following. And lo, in February of 2002, the wrestling gods answered this humble community's prayer and granted them their salvation. Ring of Honor. Yeah, and uh, women's extreme wrestling as well. At the same time that Rob Feinstein was starting ROH as a way to bolster his video distribution business, former ECW promoters and staff Dan Kowal, Greg Bagarosi, and Steve Carroll started up WEW to play up on the popularity of hardcore wrestling at that time, but to also spice things up by making it a women's league. And we all know what women were good for in the days of ECW, right? These two promotions, born in the same month and both inspired by the memory of ECW, went in two very different directions. One has gone on to become a home for some of the best wrestlers of this generation, and the other was sold via infomercial late at night on cable. Enter the world of hardcore extreme women's wrestling with extremely dangerous women of wrestling, the DVD. WEW was also known as women's erotic wrestling, and boy do they play that up. A good chunk of their talent in the early days of the company were strippers and porn stars on their days off. Could they wrestle? God no, but hey, they had great bodies, and at this point in history, that's pretty much all you needed to get recognized as a woman in the business. Don't be mistaken though, the promotion always had competent female wrestlers. By the end, women like Amber O'Neill, Velvet Sky, Mercedes Martinez, Jazz, and Daphne were just some of the notable names to have been in that ring. Their first pay-per-view opened up with a match with Alexis Lurie, the future Mickey frickin' James. Over time, the legit wrestling overshadowed the gratuitous sex, but that was the bulk of what the early years were all about. And that era is what I'm looking at today. For the bulk of this episode, I'll be referencing the very first WEW DVD set, a collection of matches and segments from their first three pay-per-views in 2002. It's about four hours of material on two double-sided discs, so it gives you a pretty good idea of what the company was all about. Which is good, because after watching these, I'm never making that mistake again. WEW ran their first shows in that famous arena on South Swanson Street in Philly. After seeing Paul Heyman's ECW pack the place multiple times, it was a little disappointing to see what the ladies were drawing. I mean, if you can't even get the straw hat and faith no more guys to come to your show, what chance do you have? In terms of camera work and the set and the lighting, the production value for the show was no worse than ECW's, but whoever pieced these DVDs together must have done it blindfolded with his hands tied behind his back. Instead of putting the contents in a nice, easy chronological order, things jump all over the place, playing matches out of sequence and even bouncing around from show to show. The final disc even has a block of matches in the middle that were already featured in the previous one. But hey, that's just par for the course for a group that's so extreme. Eric Gargiulo, best known for his work with Combat Zone Wrestling, provided the play-by-play -play for WEW. He worked the first event with ECW alum Joel Gertner, who kind of sounded bored to be there. He didn't even do any innuendo-laden rhymes. Muffin, have you ever seen action like this before at Viking Hall? Absolutely not. Absolutely not. Only women's extreme wrestling here at the inaugural pay-per-view. But after that first show, all the color commentary was done by a man named Jeffrey James. I don't know who this guy is, but it sounds like there are now two Eric Gargiulos on the mic. I'm sure you're wondering, and the answer is yes. The commentary is fucking dreadful. It's like having two Jerry Lawlers with less than half the combined wit. It is all the class and sophistication of a pair of 12-year-old boys who just saw a tit for the first time, and now they're just bursting at the seams with sexual frustration and misogyny. 
I thought this was a women's pay-per-view. I think I'm seeing a man out there. They have been bitter rivals ever since they entered this business together, and this is just a culmination of that hatred between one another. And they're both hot, Eric. Don't forget that. Well, you know how you can tell she's the head nurse here in WEW, don't you? How was that? Look, can't you see all the dirt on her knees? And I think it's cold in here, Jeffrey. <laughs> I say it looks like she's smuggling raisins. She's winding up right into the ribs. At least Christy won't need you. She won't need her birth control after this match. You know this rev's got to be getting a boner right about now. Uh, I think I saw her at a massage parlor the other night. For another 20, I could have gotten a full release. She's got the, another redhead here in WEW. You think she has to snatch the match? I heard she can do the alphabet naked. I heard she enjoys to do the alphabet. I don't care. Whatever she does, as long as it's done naked. I think I'm getting a rise in my Levi's scores. You look. I might have to go rub one out there sometime, so. This DVD caused me to run up a huge bill at my local Walgreens. Do you know how many vomit bags I went through watching this thing? One thing Eric and Jeff do often is change up some of the names of moves to make them sound more feminine or sexy. For example, the knife edge chop was renamed the breast edge chop, which doesn't make any sense since you aren't chopping a knife. Jeffrey James's crowning achievement comes at the end of a mixed tag match where a pair of tables have been stacked atop one another in the ring. This guy, Dirty Deeds Darren Wise, made an unwise decision to try and jump off them onto his opponent because I guess he forgot physics. It's immediately followed up with the worst call I've ever heard. You have been warned. He's up! Hey look, it's only the condom in your wallet! Oh, what, what, the, what the hell was that? What a, ca what a catastrophe! <laughs> That's the worst thing since 9-11, Garshula! And now let's talk about some of the characters who are on this show. Finally, the smoke has arrived to the Philadelphia. For reasons I'll never understand, the commissioner of WEW was a jabroni by the name of The Smoke, a very, very bad rock cosplay. I mean, he was committed to it, but he was just bad at it. The guy couldn't even raise a decent eyebrow. He was so bad, even tables didn't want to put up with him. I'm guessing since The Rock was making his way to Hollywood at this time, somebody had to step in and meet the demand. You can't come through unless you have credentials. Credentials? This is before in the smoke. The smoke is the commissioner of WEW. What the hell are you two jabronis talking about? Tonight in WEW, the pay-per-view, live in Philadelphia. No, not even live. We're going national. I'm pretty sure you can be both, Smoke. Smoke's biggest rival was none other than Ice Cold Billy Austin, who ends up costing the smoke he won a match. He barely shows up again in this DVD set. I mean... Parodies worked for the Blue World Order, so why not? The Smoke frequently managed a pair of women, Lady Storm and Amanda Storm, no relation. I've never seen Amanda Storm before, but her look and gimmick are like a mix of Bruiser Brody, the Bushwhackers, and Bob Backlund. This woman, one of the few who actually seems to know what she's doing in the ring, is a ridiculous character. She is uncomfortably intense. G.I. Ho! You Barbie fucking bimbo! I'm a man of storm, nobody can beat me! I'm gonna take your arms! Ha! Huh? One arm off! Ha! Huh? Two arms off! I gotta rip them off like a fly! I am the fucking Nazi queen! Z-Kyle! Z-Kyle! And, uh... Nazi! For some reason. Awesome! In disc one, there's an advertised bra and thong match between Britney the schoolgirl, an obvious take on Britney Spears, who was billed from the 12th grade, and a woman named Bar Room Barbie. Unlike other bra and panties matches, though, these two are going to start the match with their clothes off. So brave to go against tradition like that. But before anything else happens, they're all beaten up by the May family, a group of hideous hillbillies led by the very large Papa May. If seeing this group for the first time didn't disgust you, don't worry, because you'll be seeing them again and again and again and again. Seriously, the May family is the strongest booked entity in this entire federation. They show up almost everywhere and do something ridiculous. It astounds me how much of a focus they get here. What connections do they have with the promoter? The only other stable in WEW that gets nearly as much love as the maze is, wait for it, the Pussy World Order. Yes, the PWO, which is all made up of porn stars who didn't wrestle except for the occasional ringer. The bulk of their work was done in backstage vignettes, featuring all sorts of softcore delights that didn't make the cut of this DVD. Despite being a major focal point of the company's history, they aren't featured nearly as much as the country bear jamboree over here. The actual wrestler of the May clan is named Davey May, who even though he's smaller than Spike Dudley and his overalls keep falling off as he wrestles, is actually not half bad. He exclusively wrestles women here and oh dear god look away! Papa May doesn't realize Davey's there! He doesn't realize it! No! Oh no! Oh crap, where are the vomit bags? Oh Jesus!
Then there's Ty Killer Weed, a big foul-mouthed pothead who goes nuts when she's not smoking. This is literally her only character trait. She's flanked by a woman named Psycho Bitch who somehow has even less of a character. See, she's a psycho because she has crazy face paint, and she's a bitch because she can only communicate in screams. Ah! Ah! Two screams. You're trying to warn me about something. Well, that's how I felt after watching all this crap. There were a lot of other colorful characters in this organization. A sexy nurse who revived wrestlers with her tongue, the referees who were on loan from the strip club down the street, but above all else, the number one star of women's extreme wrestling was known as America's hardcore icon, G.I. Ho. She was undoubtedly the top star of the Federation during her run. She was frequently put in high-profile matches, given big angles, and was even one of the first world champions. It's just too bad she couldn't wrestle. In this match, she's so nervous when doing flying spots that she does two of them. How could she even move around those boots without breaking her ankle? One time, G.I. Ho was the prize to be won in a match pitting Rebecca Wilde, whose implants looked like they were trying to rip themselves off her body, and porn star Fujiku Kano. But unfortunately for you or I, she is not interested in our sexuality. She is pure lesbian. She is into the women. Ms. Ho appeared to wish the girls luck, but then her boyfriend showed up and got mad, prompting the two ladies to just beat him up, then walk off together. Lesbians, right? They'll sleep with anyone. But Ho and these two ladies are far from the worst of it when it comes to the entering action. You can count on one hand the number of matches that don't have some kind of terrible botch, and those usually involve the only women wearing actual wrestling gear. But there is a lot of sloppy wrestling in this show. Luckily, the crowd doesn't care because... Boobs! Then there's a match pitting Valentina, taking on Trinity, no, not that Trinity, managed by someone named Steve the Sound Guy. After a terrible in-ring display, Steve hits his own wrestler with a ukulele, raises Valentina's hand, then... I'm not beating anybody up. Oh. And now what? What kind of a relationship is this? Oh, great. They're... They're okay still? You just, you know, cost her the match, you, you hit her in the head, and now you're hugging, and... Everyone's cool? What? Why? Why? You know what? That's it. I'm tapping out. I'm done. I can't watch this anymore. I don't care if it gets better by the end of its run. I am done. There are not enough ways to describe how bad this product is. But I'm going to do my damnedest to find some. Women's Extreme Wrestling is shit. Pure, unadulterated, soft serve shit. A league that was specifically designed to cater exclusively to horny teens and sad adults. This is the product of ECW splitting its soul into two after its death, where Ring of Honor got the pure good half and WEW got the pure evil half. Women's leagues like Glow and Wow and Rest Delicious were all cheesy, but at least the ladies were trained and didn't fall over themselves trying to execute the most basic maneuvers. They made you groan, but they didn't make you ill. There is better wrestling, there is better commentary, there is better production, there is better porn. There is better everything than what you see here. This stuff is so bad, it's actually kind of hilarious. You have to laugh because otherwise you would cry. It's the kind of thing that can only be enjoyed by the most depraved individuals. And this DVD set is just the tip of the iceberg. There are tons of different sets available online and a fair number of shows on YouTube. How could I forget the time some guy proposed a match against a woman who he would have sex with if he won? Since you're not mixing business with pleasure, why don't we just uh, do business? Except if I win. I get my pleasure in the bedroom. Oh, hey, and what about Terra Titanium wrestling in a dildo on a pole match? Boy, that three-foot pole is making it really difficult in these girls. This trashed the kind of stuff Vince Russo would have booked. I swear to God, bro, why didn't I think of that? Bro, think of all those homosexual Finn Balor fans I'd convert after showing them this, bro. Again, it's important to mention that the early days of this company are the worst. The overall quality improved by the time the league shut down in 2008. As women's wrestling was gaining popularity in the States, all those wrestlers had to work somewhere and there weren't a ton of women's leagues around yet. Their website's still alive and kicking, where they're selling videos of their shows for a modest monthly fee. But considering we know why it is anyone will watch it, there are plenty of other websites out there you can get what you're looking for for free. Be sure to thumbs up this video if you like it, comment below, subscribe to Wrestling With Regret, and buy the t-shirts at ProWrestlingTees.com. I'm Brian Zane, and I'll see you next time. I'm Tony the Pop, and I'm the goddaughter. When I enter the ring, it's gonna be a slaughter. You mess with me, you'll be sleeping with the fishes, cause Tony the Top is Wrestlelicious. I'm Gloria, an all-American girl. I love to see the American flag unfurl. I'm patriotic, not the least malicious. I'm red, white, blue.